there's another story that's brewing right now, and it, it's going to have some legs to it, Donnie. Um, Carmelo Anthony does a podcast by the name of 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. Okay. And he interviewed the Giants' Kayvon Thibodeau. Mm. And rather than have me explain what Kayvon said, let's listen. And the crux of it is Kayvon is on Team Saquon rather than Team Daniel. Here's, here's a clip from 7 p.m. in Brooklyn with Mello. You paid Daniel Jones $40 million. Me? I believe. A lot of people was mad at that. A lot okay. of people was mad at that. But I was like, let listen. Me, let me tell you what I'm mad at. And it's the only thing I'll say about that. What I'm mad about is that Saquon, because if you look at the game, the tape, Saquon was responsible for at least 30% of our explosive plays. Oh, yeah. Not more. Talking about the year we won the playoff game. So for me and for the integrity of working together and hard work and we all believe the same things, I feel like Saquon should have got paid first. Listen, he, he's entitled to his opinion. Saquon was offered money that was commensurate to what running backs get. Unfortunately for Saquon, when he was a kid, he decided to be a running back. He didn't become a quarterback. He's a running back. What is Thibodeau talking about? What kind of money did he want them to give him? I don't understand it, Don. So, but, I mean, are you in your own way? He, he, he goes on to say, you know, he likes Daniel Jones, whatever. But they should have taken care. They 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 offered but Saquon Barkley a contract commensurate with to what running backs get. He said no. Well, you've said it over and over. Players do not make good general managers, right? Yeah, they make awful ones. They right now, in this case, it's not so much he's an awful general manager uh, because he 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 doesn't know players. He knows players. He just doesn't get the economics of the game. And, and why would you pay a running back more than any other running back or, or pay him commensurate to uh, the great, the best running back in football and had it come at the expense of, of your quarterback, now you don't have an alternative. Like, if he was a general manager, he would look at the numbers, look at the salary cap. He's just looking at, hey, all I know is I played on a football team and our best offensive player, Saquon Barkley's not getting paid, and the guy that was the second best offensive player got $40 million a year. That doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to a lot of people. And if this was baseball, Michael, then you would probably see Saquon make a lot of money and you'd keep them all together. But in football with the salary cap and with the way running backs are paid, the Giants played it the right way, and it ended up working out because he ended up playing and playing well for the Giants under the money they wanted to pay him. And they've got a franchise tag that was negotiated by your players' union that they can, in fact, bring in that is a lot cheaper for running backs than it is for a quarterback. So he is speaking as a passionate football player that looks inside the room and just looks at the stats. But he doesn't, he doesn't know. As a general manager, you can't just look at those things. You've got a lot to have to deal with. I mean, he's you, talking you, more like a fan and just a player in the room than, than knowing what it's actually like to be a general manager in the NFL. And, and you know, he, he, in defense of him, he says he, he does believe in Jones. But what he doesn't have to do, but Joe Shane has to do, it's almost like solving a Rubik's Cube. Now, if they didn't come to an agreement with Jones, he would have been franchise tagged. Right. And then they would have to decide, are we giving Barkley what he wants or are we going to let him walk? But once they came to the deal with Jones, then the franchise tag became available, and that was the only prudent thing to do is to slap that on Saquon. And once again, Kayvon Thibodeau might think that Saquon Barkley is more important to the whole process than, than Jones because he should have gotten paid first. But that's not the way it works if you're a running back. Running backs are not respected by NFL front offices the way that quarterbacks are. They're just not. Well, How could he not see that? It was a not, Rubik's Cube move. It's not a case of respect. It's a case of I can find a replacement at a lot cheaper because of the way the game is constructed Look now. at Isaiah Pacheco. Right. So look yeah, at the only... nothing. Right, and and, you, and so you don't look at what McCaffrey's doing in San Francisco, right? He he is obviously a tremendous part of what they do to their offense. Is he paid anywhere close to any of the other big name players on the team? No, because he's a running back, and I don't have to pay a running back. If I've got an offensive line, I got a quarterback, I got an offensive system, I can plug in a third round pick that might be able to come up with numbers that are similar to those guys. That's the problem. They love Saquon. He's a great kid. Fans love him. He's an important piece to the puzzle. But you don't have to pay a lot of money for that position. They still don't. They can franchise him again. It's just good business. 
Now, to now, it's not just him, Michael. I mean, Mike Tannenbaum said, I don't want to lose the room. So this is kind of what Mike Tannenbaum was talking about, where now you know Thibodeau is talking about they should pay him. It frustrates players, but at the end of the day, why isn't anybody else caving? Nobody else is giving big-time money. The Cowboys let Elliott walk. Cut him. Let's see what happens with Derrick Henry. But Let, here's see. the other part. I mean, there's a price that's on running backs. And yeah, I love it. Well, they should have paid. They did pay him. Again, as Don said, and it's, I'm a, bit, a big proponent of this, they negotiated the franchise tag. They didn't draw a line in the sand. So nobody's really a true free agent. If, if they have the franchise tag slapped on him, he got paid. He got, he got about $10 million. Right. That he got paid the going rate. That's that's what is that the the average of the top three running backs? He got paid. Yeah, he just gets the, he didn't get the. It's not like they released him. He got paid. He got paid contractually what yeah. they had to give him. Now you talk about the play, and this falls. Uh, this hurts Daniel Jones too. Is that Barkley does get hurt, and Barkley? I'm sorry. When when I see Pacheco moving the line and making not making guys miss running through guys and and Derrick Henry running downhill, that's not Saquon's game. Saquon is great in open space, but you've said it a million times. You know, for every big sixty yard run, there's a there's a five yard loss in the backfield. But I don't want to pick on him. It's just it's that's just the nature of the game. But you know, Thibodeau's looking at it. And goes we were we were nine seven and one last year primarily because of this guy. So why are we why are we messing around with him? And then we give forty million dollars to a guy that wasn't as good as Barkley and now is hurt. So uh, you know, I don't know I, why he needs to go and tell everybody about this. It's not good for the team and it's not good for, I for believe, Daniel Jones. Don, and we've spoken about this a lot. Guys go on podcasts are very comfortable. He's talking to the great Carmelo Anthony. Probably thinks that no one's going to hear it, but they don't understand that podcasts have reach and they are going to hear it. It's going to be it's going to be a point of discussion in, in the giant front offices. It just is. It's a dumb yeah. thing for him to say because you are co you're creating a division. Yeah. I yeah. love the fact that he's supporting um, Saquon Barkley, but in a way. Although he says he's behind Daniel Jones, it's not a great look. It's, is he really supporting Daniel Jones? And, and here's the other thing that I would tell Thibodeau, is that you're lucky you play a position that does get paid. So you will get paid. If you play well, you will get paid. It's just this is why you don't take Barkley number two overall, Michael, because now you've got to go through this. And you said that from the very beginning. You know, so th this is what opens it up. But but you can but but Thibodeau, you can take fifth overall and pay him because he plays a position that you can pay guys. Same thing with quarterbacks. Those are the guys that you pay. Those are the guys that are needle movers. Now Saquon is a needle mover. But where people misunderstand is that the Giants, if they are a functioning offense. They can get somebody that can do similar to what Barkley does for a heck of a lot cheaper than they're even paying Barkley. Right, they have well, to what give was Camara, pick a, a third a, round pick. They have to give Camara a was a third round pick. Yeah, a twenty five percent raise if they franchise him for the second time. So make him twelve point five million dollars. They might do that. And then you're, you're taking two years out, one year at a time, as he's getting older. I'm sorry. And also, Mr. Thibodeau, please. Go study the history of the Giants and what the salary cap does and how you have to manage it. Phil Simms is one of the most beloved players of all time. He got released. He got released, and he was still a good player. He simply walked into the office thinking that he was going to sign footballs, and he was told that he was no longer a Giant. If you could do that to Phil Simms, you could do that to Saquon Barkley. Hey, you got to get a hold of yourself. Is, is, is Isaiah Pacheco a really good running back? I think he's great. Is he a major contributor to a team that might win a second consecutive Super Bowl? Probably third offensively behind um, Kelsey and Mahomes. Taking in the seventh round. Yep. So that's the point. Now, there's not too Now, there are always great You know, the, the, you know Davis was taken in the seventh round in Denver. And there are quarterbacks that were taken in the third round that win Super Bowls, like Joe Montana and Russell Wilson. There's always the outliers. But historically, in a cap sport, you've got to break down what do I pay my posi position players. And when I look at running backs and the fines that I can get late in the draft on the cheap that can be productive, like Isaiah Pacheco, does not work to Barkley's... Uh, Narrative and even and how much is McCaffrey making? Sixteen. Sixteen. And I'm sorry. He, I, he, he, listen, I'm sorry. He's better than he's better than Saquon. But he, he but, does but more he, things. But even him making sixteen million dollars is like a slap in the face. If if this was if this was a, a non-cap sport, you think he'd be making sixteen million dollars a year? No. You're and right. you know what's going to happen is if San Francisco does win a championship, 
then they're going to have to pay Purdy, and that means that it's going to come at the expense of other guys on the team. Uh, it's because you pay quarterbacks. You know, it's, it's it, they just, I'm not going to get mad at them because I don't even understand the salary cap. But, you know, it's, it's not baseball. It's not even basketball where you can pay the guys that you draft anything you want. It's a hard cap sport, and these are the problems that you have to deal with.